Hello everyone and welcome again to our weekly share in English with the great tzaddik Rabbi Shalom Arush Lita Q&A with Rabbi Arush. We're happy to have you here. We hope you had a wonderful week and we're getting ready for a wonderful, enthusiastic and strengthening program. Without any further ado, I'd like to pass the microphone on to the great Rabbi, Rabbi Arush Lita. Hello everyone. <laughs> I am I am I know poor in Qatar. <laughs> Today we had here in Jerusalem and all over the world small Purim. Uh <laughs> 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 I blessed this festival known as Purim Katan, which happens in a leap year. May this small one become great and big. <laughs> With the help of Hashem, in less than a month, it's going to grow. of <laughs> We need to remember this well, because as much as we speak about this and strengthen this, we won't be able to emphasize this important point, because it says in the books, that the day of Purim is the greatest day of all the year. And what is so great about Purim? In all things, it is great in the fact that the 50th gate of holiness shines on this day. This is the day where we can subdue that negative spiritual shell of Haman Amalek completely. This is the day of unity between man and his fellow man in such a wonderful way that doesn't exist in any other day during the year. We give each other portions of food and drink from one person to his fellow friend and we give an abundance as much as we can. We give money to the poor. Anyone that stretches his hand out and asks to get some money, we give him. There are many people that during the rest of the year you would never give them a single dime. But on Purim, we give anyone who asks. <laughs> Some say that you have to strengthen the receiving of the Torah on the day of Purim even more than on the day of Shavuos when we got the Torah. Oh, <laughs> Of 
הכל מתקבל. But the greatest thing that everyone admits that nothing like this exists in any other day during the year is that every single thing that you ask for in Purim, you'll receive. <laughs> It says that any who stretch their hands out and ask, receive what they ask for. כל הפושט נודעת נותנים לו, גם השמיים, יש הנהגה קדוש, כל מה שפרלים מקבלים. The heavenly realm is led in a similar way to the earthly realm. Just like in the earthly realm on the day of Purim, anyone who reaches his hand out and asks for something receives what he asks for, it's the same thing in the heavenly realm. Anything that you reach your hand out and ask for, you shall receive from Hashem. מה שאמרתי חשוב מאוד לחזק את הדרך כולם בשביל שיגיע הפורים כל אחד נפלא אל ישועות. Like I said, it is very important to strengthen you all, so you prepare yourself, so when the day of Purim arrives, you will all have the power to work salvations and miracles. לכן מי שמבין ויודע מה זה פורים, הוא עושה את הפורים בצורה נכונה. Therefore, any who understand and realize what this day of Purim is, they do the day of Purim. They act according to the day of Purim in the proper way. אז היום רק רציתי לחזק. אני גוזר את זה צריך שכל אחד כבר יתפלל שפורים יזכה להתפלל הרבה שיפעל ישועות. So today I only wanted to strengthen this point that all of you start praying already now that on the day of Purim you will have the power to pray lengthily and to work salvations. בעזרת השם לפני הפורים With the help of Hashem before Purim, we will try and prepare you properly for this holy day. Well. Rabbeinu writes in the book Likutei Moharan. Kshadayim yodea shekol me'oro ha'otav אם לטובותו, זאת בחינה אם אין עולם הבא. When a person knows that everything that's occurred to him, everything that's happening with him is for his better good, that aspect is like being in the heavenly realm and living in heaven. זה לא פשוט להגיע לדעת הזאת. It's not simple to reach this wisdom and spiritual knowledge. לדבר עם זה, מה עוד קל. ספיקינג אבאוט איט איז ווי איזי. אבל כשאדם עובר עליו ניסיונות, קשיים, ניסויים, עניות, אז הוא נראה שיזכה להתחזק לאנדרס, זה... וזה נגד השכל שלו, וממש ידע, זה לכתובה. When a person goes through difficulties, trials, things that are holding him back, when a person goes through those things, to be able to realize and to hold on to this knowledge that everything is for the better good, even though it's completely against what you think, that is a great level, knowing that everything is for the better good. בנו לא אמר, כשאדם מאמין. רבינו דין סי ווין הפרסון בליבס. כי מאמין יותר קל. בקוד בליבינג איז איזייר דן נואינג. אבל רבינו יודע, יודע. רבינו רייט ווין הפרסון נואוז דאט אביטינג איז פייסבוק. שכל המראות הם לאותו ועזו. זה... That everything that's happened to him is for his better good. 
הבן הוא, יש לו מהלך, מהלך שלם, איך אדם יגיע שיהיה לו את הדעת הזה. Rabbeinu here is leading us through this whole process of how to reach this wisdom and spiritual knowledge. Rabbeinu Matheel, Zot Abhina, Eif Shal Yasik, Ela, Shemaalei, Bhinat Malchut Yuguzusha, Maagalot, Mimen Akum. Rabbeinu starts saying that the first stage is you can't reach this level until you take the holy kingship, the kingship of holiness, and you take it out of what it is stuck between the non-Jews, between the, 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 the non-spiritual places, and you raise it back to its source. Because now the reality is that the rulership, the leadership, the kingship, is not in the hands of Israel, it's in the hands of the non-Jews. Rabbeinu says, you cannot take the kingship that is now currently in the hands of the Gentiles and return it to Hashem unless you confess in front of a Torah scholar. אז בזמן שרבנו היה בעולם הזה, When Rabbeinu lived in this world, היה כמה שנים שהיו מתבדים. There were several years where his students used to confess in front of Rabbeinu himself. But afterwards, after several years, he stopped this custom and he refused to allow his students to confess in front of him and he told him, go confess in your Hispoidus to Hashem. And this guidance has remained that we do not confess in front of any single righteous or pious person, we only confess in front of Hashem. Rabbeinu explains when a person confesses in front of Hashem, Rabbeinu brings the verse, take with you words, which this is a verse resembling and talking about confessing about all the actions that you've done. And Rabbeinu explains that confessing, this is a certain concept of kingship, of royalty. When a person sins, when it's not connected to Hashem, 
when it's not doing what Hashem wants, he takes Hashem's kingship and he plummets it down under. But when he confesses about what he did, when he wants to repent, he takes this kingship, this royalty, and he elevates it back to its source, to Hashem himself. This is the path when a person confesses on a daily basis. Confessing every single day and repenting for your actions. Through this, a person will receive the that, the wisdom and spiritual knowledge, to know that every single thing that's happening to him, everything is for his better good. Rabbeinu here brings the Holy Gomorrah. That brings a parable of how a person lives in this world. It's a parable about a person, and this is relating to every single one of us who is walking at the middle of the night. He's walking in darkness, he's walking alone. This is this world, this earthly realm, which is considered to be a night and a darkness compared to the heavenly realm, to the afterlife. And this person who was walking alone at night was afraid of four things. He was afraid of thorns, of stones, he was afraid of bad animals, and he was afraid of robbers. Four things. And these four things resemble the four different sections into which this world is divided. Something which is has no life in it whatsoever, for example, like a rock. Something which, like plants, has the power of growth. Someone which has the power of living but is still an animal. And someone that is something that is like a human being, something that can speak. Those are the four different aspects that this world is divided into. <laughs> but what's worse is that he doesn't know where he's supposed to follow. He doesn't know what path he's supposed to take. <laughs> <laughs> Even if a person can overcome all his different fears, he doesn't know what path he's supposed to follow. He doesn't know in which direction he's supposed to go. Rabbeinu writes, 
that just by seeing the face of a righteous person, he is already saved from the things that are still and from the things that are growing. For example, rocks and plants. <laughs> Because he receives the power to see. So, what is this? What is this? What And those things that we spoke about, things that are still and things that are growing, resemble sadness and resemble negative traits, negative virtues. And when a person gives charity to the righteous and pious person, He's also saved from evil animals, which are the livelihood of this world, things that are alive like animals, and from the robbers, which means from people, the highest level. <laughs> and Rabbeinu writes that what is he saved from? from speaking things that have got no purpose, from vanity, from pride, from evil things that he says about his friends. But he still doesn't know what path to follow and what direction to go. But when he confesses in front of a Torah scholar, in front of a righteous and pious person, that righteous and pious person gives him a path which is suitable to the source of his soul. And now he knows what way to follow. <laughs> the best thing is to learn the books of Garden of Emunah and Forest Fields, which teach you how to do an avaris boitus and that teaches you how to find your path kesher kesher shelot kodav shola the rabbi is asking if there are any questions so i am the shelot ken kodav yesh kama shelot we're going to say the questions first of all in english and then we're going to say in hebrew there's a question here about this boitus it happened to me that i fall asleep while i am doing the hour of his boitus is that considered to be as if i did my hour Or do I need to start from the begin, from the beginning, or can I just complete the time that I fell asleep? Mishu kan Rav Shuel Rav unir dam bezman hashayil bodedut shelo. Shabu Shuel Alef. Zin achshav shu asa sha. Veim lo utzach leatchim atchala. O shemaspik lo leashlim raket azman shu yashan. Ima ze imzer kol ero mi day pahal malo kol yom kabal. If this happens, it doesn't happen occasionally, but happens rarely, it's considered to be as if he did his hour. But the best thing for him to do is to complete the time that he fell asleep to complete his hour. Rabbi Levitz, Hak Bender, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender used to tell us that a person who falls asleep while he's bodhidus, that's considered to be holy sleep. <laughs> Another question. What is better, to donate charity for the poor and the needy, or to donate money to distribute books to the soldiers? שואלים פה הרבה יותר טוב הרב, לתרום צדקה לעני ולנזקקים, או לתרום כסף להפצה לחיילים? זה... זה... Pardon the person who's asking this question. You need to do both things. You need to donate charity to the poor and to the needy, and you need to give money so that we can distribute to the soldiers. But 
מישהו בדרך כלל תומך בו, שהוא תלמיד חכם, הוא אש לו, או לא, חבר שונא טוב, או משהו. הוא לא יכול להפסיק לתמוך בו בשביל לתת דקה לחיילים. Certainly, if a person has someone who's close to him, who's a Torah scholar, and he supports him, like for example, his brother, his friend, and he gives him a monthly stipend, he can't suddenly stop it and give that money to the soldiers. <laughs> you can't do that. But we always need to find a person <laughs> But you always need to find the golden path. You can find more money to donate. There's another question here about soldiers, which is a very interesting question. A person that says that he grew up in a very anti-Zionist Hasidus and anti-everything that's got to do with the state. And over the past few years, he became closer to the rabbi's teaching and it really saved his life. Every day he does an Aris boy to do, he learns the rabbi's books. And when he hears the rabbi speaking about soldiers or making Aliyah in Eretz Yisrael, it really confuses him because it seems like there's a contradiction between the way he grew up in and the rabbi's way. ספרים של הרב הצילו לו את החיים, הוא עושה שעה התבודדות. כשהוא שומע את הרב מדבר על עלייה על ארץ ישראל, על חיילים וכדומה, זה מאוד מבלבל אותו, כי זה סתירה כביכול בדרך שבה הוא גדל לדרך של הרב. הוא רוצה הרב להבין איך כל הדברים האלה הרב מסתדרים. מה, מה הגישה הנכונה לזה? לא הצלחתי להבין אותו. הוא הרב גדל הרב בחסדות מאוד אנטי ציונית. הוא אומר, לכאורה הוא שומע את הדברים של הרב, זה נשמע לו כביכול. כמו שזה ממש נוגד את זה, הוא אומר, איך זה מסתדר, מה... לפי דעתי, כל מה שהמשמר המבנה, אני נוגד. In my opinion, the rabbi says, every single thing that you heard from me is probably against the way you grew up. It's not just this. עכשיו רק... Only now you're realizing that the things that you're hearing are not the way you grew up in. <laughs> if you trusted me so far with all my teachings <laughs> and you did what you did against everything that you learned in your previous life also on this trust me that this is the right path and the right way אנחנו ממש יש מציאות אי אפשר זה לא בכוח ביני לבין מישהו. This is not an argument between me and anyone else. We have a reality. איזה מציאות בורא העולם עשה שאלה There's a reality that the Creator brought the people, all the Jews in the diaspora, and helped them come to the land of Israel. He built and is building the land of Israel. Not only in the materialistic realm, from the physical aspect that the land of Israel is a beautiful land, but spiritually, the voice of the Torah in the land of Israel here is immense. Hundreds of thousands of boys and girls are learning and are educated in the path of the Torah. 
את הכוללים, ישיבות. We have here mikvahs, yeshivas, כוללים for places for married people, places for married people to study Torah. ובחוץ לארץ, הרבה ילדים, בגלל שעולה רק בכסף, שילמדו בצבל יהודי, לומדים עם גויים, זה לא עשר ילדים. And abroad in the diaspora, because Jewish studies are so expensive, many Jewish children are learning with non-Jews. We're not talking about only 10 people. We're talking about quantities of Jews. So now, the people who are in the morning, are going to be a lot of ומי שהלך על עלות ארץ ישראל, הציל את הידיים שלו, שלפחות אם הוא יהודי. When we look at the situation of assimilation abroad in the diaspora, we're talking here about scary, petrifying percentages. And people who made Aliyah and came to live here in the land of Israel, they saved their children from assimilation. <laughs> בוא נברך את כל העם ישראל. Let's bless all the people of Israel. כולם מעלו, קפצנו, יאו לאו לארץ ישראל בקרוב. Everyone should make Aliyah come to Israel and Hashem shall gather us all together here in the land of Israel. בפרט מי ששומע תורה ומצוות. And especially the people who preserve the Torah and the mitzvahs. ככה אני אזכה בזה לשם, שיהיה רצון שברוך הוא יביא את המשיח בן דוד. And we shall merit with the help of Hashem that the Messiah, the son of David, shall come. אבני בית המקדש השלישי. And he'll build the third temple. וכשבו ישמור לנו. על כל עם ישראל בכל העולם, כל עם העולם ישמע את כולם. And Hashem will protect all the people of Israel all over the world. הרבה יהודים, אנשים ממש הציעו לו אותם בזה ש... Many Jews, Hashem saved them, literally speaking, by them making Aliyah to the land of Israel. May we merit to have the full and complete redemption already this year before Pesach. Amen. Thank you very much for being with us. And until next week, have a good and blessed week. Amen.